one of the things about uh, doing stop motion is that it's very hard to make changes. Obviously, you need to know exactly what story you want to tell and how everything's going to go way in advance. And the script for this is fucking awesome. And the, the characters and the story. And I guess my question is, when did you know this is going to work, this is locked, we're, this is, a, you know what I mean? Like, and that we, we're not going to need to make any changes, if you will. Well, we, we actually, you know, we had an impression that scenes were working, you know, just based on the audio and the storyboards and the animatic stage, but a lot did change during the process. We weren't allowed to do multiple takes of things, but we had a lot of very long shots, yeah. and we could see um, one example that uh, Charlie referred to earlier today is, is there's one, there's an interaction between Lisa and Michael where Michael just kind of ended up kind of he's a large guy and she's small and petite he kind of ended up kind of crowding her and we were watching it you know up to the up to the moment of where it was in this in this shot and felt like well she would be a little intimidated by him in this moment and and so we were able to kind of change direction and say well you know she she gets a little intimidated and he's able to pick up on on her vibe and and back off a little bit and so we were we were making changes as we were going and seeing the shots develop over time but you're correct we weren't able to like do something and then redo it uh can i ask how long was your first cut or is it pretty much your first cut this exact film it's pretty close yeah i don't think it's yeah i mean it was cut in the animatic really before we shot the thing so um i mean there was editing involved and in putting it together but that that process was happening throughout the movie. As we were shooting scenes, we'd replace the uh, storyboard with the finished film in the animatic, and um, I don't. I think it, it remained about the same. Yeah, it's number like of some minutes. some things end up. It's hard to tell how long it's going to take somebody to walk across the room in storyboard format, you know, and then actually having them physically do it. So sometimes things expand a little bit, and sometimes things contract a little bit, and it ends up kind of like balancing out in some way. Well, in the, when you guys were doing the animatics and you had the script, you're doing the animatics, you're putting it together, was there a story that you cut out due to cost or time? Because I found that a lot of stop motion movies are about an hour and a half due to, to the cost and the time it takes to create something like this. So I'm just curious if you lost things along the way. No, it was, it was this length throughout. Um, and it was, you know, it's on the shorter side, obviously. So it already was that length, so we didn't have to cut anything out. Um, we actually added things we did from add the things, original. Yeah. We added all the play. visual gags are, are are added. Nothing, none of that stuff was in the in the play. Nothing that you had to see was in the play because it was a radio play. So. One of the things that, and you mentioned it a second ago, one of the things that really struck me as a fan of this genre of what, were the insane length of these takes. Was it always designed for these long, especially with going in the elevator and pulling out? I, mean, I was watching it just jaw on ground, you know? So talk a little bit about the creation of those shots. You know, that, that one's an interesting shot. You should talk about the elevator shot. Yeah, uh, well, you know, the idea came from wanting it to be cinematic and not wanting it to be, uh, not wanting to be beholden to, you know, the limitations of stop motion or the medium that we were working in. So just kind of like shot listing it and designing it from a storyboard standpoint of how we want to tell this story narratively and then kind of trying to figure out how we're going to execute it so that elevator shot that you're talking about um, it's actually all one shot from when he enters the hotel lobby and then it it's motion control and it follows him with Dennis over to the elevator and inside the elevator and once they're inside the elevator the the set went away um, from the lobby and it, he animated the whole scene in the elevator and then when they were about to come out of the elevator into the hallway, that entire elevator set with all the lighting attached to it moved over to another stage and attached itself to the hallway set so that they could come out and actually be on the hallway and go all the way down the hallway and open the door and inside is the hotel set. So we, we made the sets modular so that they can move from stage to stage so that we can make that all one shot. Um, I, for people that are watching right now, they're going to see that one of the sets is right behind you. Um, what does it take to take one of those things home? If, say, a journalist isn't doing interviews and said, I'm joking around, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering where these things are actually going to end up. 
there's they're gonna be at the Arclight and the Limley and there's a couple sets at the Museum of Moving Image in New York, Museum mm -hmm. of Moving Images. Ultimately where they will end up, uh, probably the Smithsonian and on the moon. On the moon. Um one of the things that I really love about your writing is you are able to capture the, the mundane moments that all of us experience and find the humor in it and sort of put it in the movie. Uh, for, for example, the cab ride in this, um, the room service buttons, there's just little moments that, that we all relate to. Uh, when you're living life, are you just seeing something happen and then sort of writing a note down? Or in the writing process, is this just coming to you in the moment when you're writing the scene, if that, if that question hopefully works? Uh, I don't know. It depends on depends on the idea and the scene. I mean, I, I, I you know I live a mostly mundane life, so I have a lot of uh, uh, material just sort of through my existence. But um, uh, if I have something that I, I like, I'll write it down, and sometimes it'll 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 come to me um, while I'm working. I, I'm I guess the answer is I have notes, and I have also extemporaneous ideas. So both. Um, in, informative, sorry. No, no, no. Uh, it's uh, it's all good. How early on was this a tough film? Speaking of financing, getting it going, was this a tough film to get financing on? Um, and could you sort of talk about what was the moment when it it actually got the money to be able to make the project? Like, was there a certain thing that happened, and all of a sudden it was like three weeks before we finished post production, it got the money to be completed. <laughs> it we. We started with Kickstarter, which was just the seed money, and we just got started, and it, it was very little money and just enough to kind of get started and without any sort of research and development, just kind of started to make the movie, thinking that it was going to be a very small budget movie, and then we realized it was going to be a much larger budget, and Keith Calder came in uh, from Snoot Entertainment, and he saw us on the Kickstarter and he reached out to us and he financed the rest of the film but it was kind of piecemeal we'd, we'd get some money and we'd get a little bit further and then get some more money and a little bit further it was a challenge all the way through was there ever a point you're like we, we might not be able to finish this thing always a point yeah always throughout the entire three years it was it was taxing well, I definitely have to ask you, you look on Rotten Tomatoes or you look across cyberspace and the reviews, and they're, they're stunning. I mean, people absolutely love this film and relate to the characters, even though they're puppets and it's stop motion. What is it like after spending so much time and your heart and soul putting this thing in when you clearly are against the wall with money uh, to have this kind of reaction to your movie? It's a relief. I mean, it's really a relief. It, it, you know... If it had gone the other way, it would be, you know, be, we'd be despairing for a long time, I think, because, you know, so much of our, our time was put into it, and, and, and nothing came of it, so, but, you know, I think, I, I don't know, that's my experience, is that one of relief. How about you? Yeah, I feel relieved that people like it. Um, I have to ask, before I run out of time, you created an FX show that was not picked up, mm -hmm. and hopefully that doesn't cause a sharing uh, uh, you know a piercing uh, nerve um, but as a fan of your work I want to see it so how can I see it but you can't exactly you that's can't see it I mean unless FX wants to uh, put it on the air or something they own it so they can do what they want with it I can't I don't have I don't have the rights to show it clearly but is there a way like a phone number I can call or a executive I can email um, what can fans of yours do to see this pilot you dial this number <laughs> on the screen and ask for what, what was the studio? FX. FX. Mr. FX. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't know what people can do. I don't know that there's there's going to be a groundswell or anything. So I, I know of at least five people that will probably do it. Is it the same five people who read the site? Hundred percent. Okay. okay, so um, we are passionate, passionate fans. Well, it's best you don't see it then, maybe, because you have to in your. In your imagination, it probably is going to be better than it could ever be in real life. And I don't know about that. I, I, uh, but I have to, because I'm about to run out of time. Um, you two clearly collaborated so well together on this project. 
are you guys talking about doing something else together? Or are you sort of like, I hate you, thank God the press is almost over, see you later? Uh, both. No, we, um, we've talked a lot about doing another uh, stop motion together um, with Rosa, our producer as well. But um, you know, I think it, it, it's contingent on this doing well commercially. I, whether or not we're going to be able to raise money to do it. So if, um, if that happens then, um, and we get the opportunity, yeah, we have some thoughts. Uh, last question for you. Uh, memorable moments from filming. You guys worked on this for three years. Is there a day or two that you'll always remember in the making of this film? Uh, the day Lisa walked off the set. Was it, there, was, there was some sort of thing going on with, and, and she, I don't know what it was, but she was hysterical. And, we couldn't find her because um, she's you know she's, she's this big so she could be anywhere yeah, so that was bad that, that day was bad but also ultimately you know heartwarming because she came back finished the scene me? sure I have to top that <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that is the reason why he's in yeah uh, I, I the, the one that pops into my mind was you know, like I said, this is this was a crazy production, and it was like we didn't we never had any money, and we were asking everybody was doing like five jobs. Like our puppet supervisor was also a fabricator. Our puppet department was really small. We were asking them to make the most complicated puppets they've ever made in their career for a small fraction of the money, and everyone was just taxed beyond anything they'd ever done before. And you kind of felt that people had reached their like breaking point, and they were like, "Is is this worth it or not?" And we had just finished shooting the breakfast scene. And we cut it together, you know, just overcut the animatic roughly, and screened it at weeklies, which is our dailies, once a week on Friday night. And there were a lot of people that I think weren't sure they were gonna come back to work on Monday. And we screened we screened that scene and everyone was just kinda quiet and they watched that whole scene cut together, the first scene from the movie that we had cut together, and when it was done, there was a, a shift in the tone and people were like I think we're doing something special here. We'll be back on Monday. And that was a special moment. I, it's a great story, and I'm very happy everyone came back. Yeah. And, and you should add that that was really early in the production too. So yeah. this, all of that, that tension and stuff was there early. You know. That, so it was. I guess it was resolved early too. In that sense. Um, as I said earlier, I love this movie. It's brilliant. Congratulations on such an achievement. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, next.